Well, good afternoon YouTube and welcome to everything on power systems for your RV. So right now you're looking at a solar charge controller, a MPPT wind charge controller, and an AB switch or a 1-2, whatever you want to call it, to select solar or wind. Because I don't do both at the same time. You need a special uh, controller for that kind of thing. So as you can see I have my brake for the turbine and my fuse and that's going to the battery. I'll show you that in a minute. So basically, uh, I have two sets of solar panels coming in and one turbine. And I'm using a, a regular extension cord because I've wired it that way uh, into the, uh, into the, the wind uh, charge controller because these are three phase. Um, so there's no positive negative. So it's just as long as you're getting the three wires from the turbine uh, down to your controller, you're good to go because it's a uh, AC, right? So this will change it into DC and charge uh, my battery. Same thing with the uh, uh, panels right now. They're coming in with 18 watts, uh, sorry, 18 amps. And let me go to the other side of the RV and show you where that is. All right, so here we have the two sets of solar panels, uh, the 100 three times three and 480 for a total of 320 down here. Now, after you do the calculation and everything else, basically the bottom denominator determines the, watt, the total wattage that you have. So if you have an 80 and three 100s, then the, the 100s will go to 80. So when you do your calculation for your amperage and your wattage, you'll have to use the bottom number of the lowest solar panel so technically at some point in time doing your calculations you may find that having the three 100 watt panels is generating more power than adding the lower ones say you had a bunch of 40s uh, then you're you're best off just going with the three 100s than having a bunch of 40s because it'll bring the, the the 100s down to 40 as well so anyways enough about that uh, basic uh, series, uh, sorry, parallel connection right there. And uh, these are the Dico, Dicio uh, semi flexibles. So, anyways, back to the batteries. So, my battery system is set up for the uh, underneath the, the, the first step uh, in my RV. Um, you have the big cable feeding the entire RV. Uh, the power going to the inverter, the other battery as part of the chain, and the solar coming in. Um, so I used to have a lead acid, and I went to carbon foam when I first bought the RV. I had three carbon foam. They have the charging uh, capacity, not capacity, but characteristics uh, of the lithium, uh, but they are they they counted as uh, lead acid uh, AGMs. And the reason for that is because a lot of RVs their converter, so when you plug into shore power or you run your generator, your converter provides the 12 volts to charge your batteries. And that's usually limited to lead acid and AGM, not lithium. So that's why uh, I did some of these modifications. So out with the uh, heavy carbon foam, which weighed 75 pounds a piece, to 25 pound lithiums. Now, as I mentioned, when you go to lithium, your uh, I have a inside this panel I have a little control box, and uh, it uh, deter it, it says when you're running your gener your your truck, it, there's a relay that will charge your AGMs or your lead acid batteries. Now, if your alternator is designed to take lithium, that's good. Unfortunately, mine is not uh, because it's a 2010. So I went in there and I disconnected the, the uh, relay that switches uh, the power from the alternator to here. Now, also when you run your generator, you're on shore power. Once this, uh, your batteries, your, your house batteries are charged, the relay would also click and charge the truck battery, which I don't want it to do anymore. So I ended up going underneath, disconnecting that cable uh, there's also another cable that was going to an inverter underneath a passenger seat, um, but that one uh, was running, 
the, the power was originating from here and was limited to uh, 75 or 50 amp fuse. This used to be a rental, so it has different rules. Um, but I didn't want it to blow that fuse every time, uh, which it was doing. So I disconnected that cable going to the inverter under the seat. And I purchased a new uh, 2000 watt uh, PureSign inverter with a remote. And here's my remote. I'm not sure you can see. Um, but it enables me to turn it on and off without opening the cover. Uh, the previous uh, inverter, I had to bend over underneath the seat to switch it on and off. Let me bring that back up. Um, so that was not practical at all. So that was that's gone. And by gone, I mean I'm just going to disconnect it and remove it. What well, is disconnected? I'm just going to remove it now. You're probably wondering what these boards are for. Uh, the air coming in to cool the inverter. Uh, the input uh, for the air is coming in this way in the front, and the hot air is coming out the back. So what I've done is I've just provided a separation between the cold air coming in and the hot air coming out this way. I also added some of these uh, weather stripping to bring up the step about a quarter inch. Uh, not only just to clear this guy because <laughs> uh, everything's pretty high up. Of course, if I, uh, if I had the space, I could put a board and have everything nicely displayed and everything. But unfortunately, you got to work with the space that you have. Um, and this is my connection for my uh, battery monitoring system. Uh, it's just a little uh, little battery thing. Here, let me show you. So this is my little battery monitor. It she gives you the voltage, the amperage coming in. Uh, now the amperage coming in is different from what you saw on the charge controller, solar charge controller, because you have to uh, keep in consideration that this is uh, minus. Uh, so the the solar charge controller amperage coming in minus whatever the RV is using either for your fridge or for whatever lights you're using at the time uh, and then this is the rest that's going into the into the battery then you got a percentage and all that kind of stuff so it's a good little monitor does what it uh, what it says and uh, I will be uh, posting uh, instructions on how to set it up um, yeah, I had to go through a few uh, websites and a few uh, videos and to combine all the information into one, uh, one place. So solar charge controller uh, and uh, solar panels is pretty easy to, to figure out. The uh, wind turbine is also not very complicated. It's not uh, rocket science. Um, these are your outputs. That's your input. Uh, this is an MPPT one. You may or may not get an MPPT. Uh, this is the brake to stop it from spinning. Uh, and if I open this up, it'll start spinning. As you can see, it's getting quicker and quicker. Now, my original video, you'll see I have a 400 watt. This is a 600 watt by Sunforce. Uh, it does a good job at night. It does charge up the batteries or compensate for, you know, whatever power you're using at night um, so fairly simple operation uh, the mast is uh, simply uh, fencing from a Home Depot uh, 10 foot lengths and uh, I added a six foot length down here so technically that's about it for for uh, you know there's nothing mysterious uh, if you have any questions you can uh, send me a, a note at uh, Denkin RV2 and I will try to answer your questions in the meantime, have yourselves a great day and hope your, uh, your power systems are uh, working the way you want them. All right. Cheers. Have a great day. So I forgot to mention that uh, my IntelliPower um, converter is not compatible with lithium uh, because it does not reach the 14.4 charge uh, voltage. That lithium needs it is able to provide the amperage uh, however it doesn't provide the uh, sufficient uh, voltage other than being in boost mode so what I've done is I've purchased a little uh, a doggle or a little what they call a pendant you see it's plugged in with the gray wire there on the side and it goes to here and this little pendant when I push this button or I hold it down it gives me 
uh, either normal charging, uh, boost charging, or float charging. So I can do, I can manually control my uh, converter so that I can charge my lithium batteries to uh, what they need to be up to 100%. All right, and if you wonder what that looks like, there's the little flyer that comes with it. Um, I contacted the uh, Progressive Dynamic. They were very helpful. Uh, spoke to a guy, asked him a bunch of technical questions, and uh, he answered them all. And so I bought this thing for $20 instead of changing my entire converter to uh, something compatible. Um, easy peasy, just plug it in, lemon squeezy, and away you go charging your lithiums. All right. Cheers, guys. All right, guys. Well, here's me face, as Ozzy uh, would say uh, from Ozzy Man Reviews. Um, so I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my family and friends back in Ottawa, Canada. Um, I miss my son a lot. Uh, my wife uh, should be landing and in, uh, in, on Friday, um, so we'll be spending a few months uh, with her down here. And I uh, just wanted to tell everybody I uh, miss you guys. Uh, they haven't invented teleportation yet, so. Unfortunately, I can't be in uh, two places at once, but uh, like many people, we have to, you know, pick where we are for the holidays, and uh, sometimes it's a choice, sometimes it's uh, not so much. But uh, in any case, uh, I want to wish everybody happy holidays, uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, happiness and health for you uh, for 2024. All right, that, uh, that's it for me for, for this video. I hope you guys uh, enjoy your week and uh, enjoy your year. Cheers.